Hi, everybody. We will get started in a minute, allowing more people to enter the Zoom room. Hi, everyone. Welcome, Kimbra, and everyone. We've got a big group coming in today. I think, how many were they just that we have registered? About 130 people. Yes. So we've got a lot of you attending. We're excited to be with you all today. Yes, we're very excited to see everybody pop in. Exciting times for all of you and us to have you on. Yes, you are muted. Uh, a few of you are asking if you're muted. We will unmute you all for question and answer time. And today's webinar, we plan to talk for the first half hour and the second half hour will be over to you to chat and ask all the questions that you have. We'll give it another 30 seconds because I know time is precious. We're about that 4.02 mark in the late afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, this um, session will be recorded. So those who are running late to it can catch up to what they may have missed. And then those of you who are on can review the content after this session. But great to have you all here. As uh, Natalie said, we're excited to have you uh, join us this afternoon. Um, and that we want to welcome you and thank you for joining us this evening. And also, I can't go on without saying happy Teacher Appreciation Week. Yeah. Um, so it's amazing in all the work that you do in your local communities and schools. So. It is a pleasure for us to have you on. Before we get started, I do wanna alert your attention to our first poll, just so that we kind of get to know you guys, and then we'll get through the presentation a bit further. But if you can take a moment to answer if you're on your computer and identify where in the New York State area are you located in? Western New York, Northern New York, Southern New York, New York City area or Long Island. And then very shortly, I think we'll get a sense of who's who in our room. And as you're doing that poll, I just wanna point out that you won't be able to be unmuted in this uh, session, but please use the chat feature or the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen to ask us any questions or to provide any other comments as we go along. Great, and I wonder if we do have access to the uh, poll, and here we go. Wow, we're pretty, pretty even. Western New York, up there in the cold country, 14%. Northern, 21%. Southern, 21%. New York City, 21 And Long Island. So very, very spread out. So that's great. Thank you for that. Um, moving on, I think now that we know you, it'd be great to introduce ourselves. Um, I'm Jocelyn Cruz Alfala from the USDA Eastern Section as Director of Schools and Community Tennis. I've been um, at the Eastern Section for about 14 years. I have done what you guys have done, which is teach in a school. Um, I have coached tennis, but not as a PE teacher, but as a coach for middle school and high school. Along with uh, presenting today is my colleague, Natalie Dagnell, and she'll 
say a bit of her, her experience and say a minute or a few seconds of introduction. Natalie, why don't you speak? So I'm the community coordinator. I'm a TSR. You'll see there's three of us on the screen. I'm one of them, the team that supports Jocelyn to help grow community and particularly a focus on tennis and schools right now. And the regions that I work on are Southern and, and New Jersey. So I look forward to supporting all of you, not only in my regions, but, you know, we work as a team and we all look forward to supporting you growing tennis in your schools. Yes. And a, a part of the team, uh, Joe Steger, who's out in the field right now at a school, I believe, who's probably joining and, and viewing uh, as we go along this presentation. He's over in the northern and western regions. And then Neil Takor, who is our schools manager for our section and handles the metro and Long Island regions. He also helped put together this presentation. So we are a team. We're excited to hear from you guys and help you out. Um, I wanted to throw up one more polling question, if I may, and just get a sense of how many of you have actually heard about the tennis program before this webinar, about the USTA Schools Tennis Program. And then I think we'll have that result in, in a minute or less than a minute. Hi, Kenneth. I think you guys are still, might be clicking on yes or no. Let's see if we have that poll result up. All right, thank you for that. Great, so for those of you who have heard about the USTA Schools Tennis Program, uh, this will be a great review. There are some things that we've added um, as, as great value adds to the services that we offer. And thank you for those who are just hearing about it for the first time. So I wanna go into you know, what we offer, why we're even involved in tennis to, to share this information with you, and how do you go about, you know, accessing those resources and, and provider support and school support and for you guys out in the field. Um, so we can head to the next slide. And with all that said, we do have a large amount of resources that we do want to introduce to you today. Um, particularly uh, the information that's available for K to 12, such as our curriculum and equipment support. And for sure, tennis can be popped up anywhere. So even if those of you on the call that don't have a large gymnasium space, which we have heard that from a number of teachers, we wanna let you know, no court, no problem. Smaller gym, no problem. We can help you out. We can give you some ideas on how, how to implement that. Um, moving forward, I wanted to um, ask another question and, and say, have you, <laughs> have you played tennis before or are you even a tennis fan? And then as you're doing that, I'm going to reintroduce Natalie to take over for the next uh, few slides that we have here and then we'll continue forward. So take a few moments to just uh, answer your question about whether you, you actually play tennis or whether you're just a fan or you play tennis and you're a fan um, or not yet. All of those are, are good answers. The not yet, surprisingly, is an answer we love to hear because it means that you're out here interested. It means that you, you're going to become a part of our, our, our tennis fan, uh, fandom in the future. So take a minute to answer that. And then if we can see those results, I'm going to repeat what uh, Jocelyn was saying is that you know this is for everyone so let's look at our look at our results here I play and I'm a fan fantastic 41 percent we've got 10 percent of people who are not yet great welcome all of you we look forward to becoming fan in the future and you'll see that not everybody who's a fan actually plays so that is one of the best parts about tennis in the schools and tennis generally is that you can love tennis and not be a player um, my mother watches tennis every day, all day. She's <laughs> obsessed, but she doesn't play. 
So repeating what uh, Jocelyn said, um, a lot of you have probably got a lot of questions and, and, and we want to answer all of those for you. But the first one is, if you're in a small school and you don't have a tennis court, that doesn't mean you can't play tennis at your school or can't introduce tennis into your PE curriculum. You do not need a court. You do not even need a gym. We can bring tennis to your schools and you can play it anywhere. You can play it out in the parking lot. You can play it in a small kind of room that you clear out. You can play it in a gym. So, so we can work with you to work out what spaces you can use to bring tennis um, to your schools. Um, I'd like to now move on to the next slide and let you watch a brief video from Shelley Connors, who's um, your president and PE teacher. She has a few words to, to share with you at this time. Hello, everyone. My name is Shelley Connors, and I am here to talk to you about the USTA program that they can do in schools for physical education teachers, the after school programs, and for tennis coaches. I am a junior high physical education teacher. I am a men's and women's varsity tennis coach. I'm also a member of New York State AFERD, our physical education association. They have helped me tremendously, not only with equipment, which is balls, tennis rackets, uh, tape to make a net, and also with curriculum. So the curriculum that they offer goes from kindergarten all the way to the high school level. And it's very easy to understand. The other thing is that they can come into your school and do in-service programs for your physical education teachers or your after-school programs. I highly suggest that you take advantage of this incredible organization and the opportunity that they can give you. Thank you. Thanks, Shirley. Hello, everyone. My name is... We nearly saw her again, but she's actually worth watching twice. So as you can tell, we, um, we've worked with a number of schools before, and um, we're now wanting to support you into understanding how this can happen in your school. And you probably, some of you might be thinking, oh, I haven't got a vision of what this looks like. I don't really understand how I could possibly teach tennis. So I'm going to start with this video that, um, that we've put together so that you can see how it actually looks when, when people are working with, with the youngsters in your schools. For the activity in, out, and all about, each student will need one racket and one beanbag and be spread out individually in the general space. In, out, going backwards, and all about. You can jump anywhere, keeping our space, keeping it safe. Woo, look at this, you're doing it. Very nice, and free. Good, look around, you still got personal space? Keeping it safe and This time. When I say in or out, instead of jogging, let's do skipping. Skipping is nice and easy. In, moving forward, skipping. Out, skipping backwards, kind of to the side there. Oh, look at you keeping it on freeze. Look at you keeping a wiggle ball on the bracket. Excellent job. And let's skip all about. In our space, good. Oh, oh, oh. All you will need is a tennis racket. On one foot, Jump over the racket handle as many times as you can in 15 seconds. Do the same thing with the left foot. Now try it with both feet. Using your outside foot, step over the tennis racket as many times as you can in 15 seconds. around the tennis racket as many times as you can in 15 seconds. Make sure you always face the same direction. Do these exercises and you will be able to run faster and jump higher. Today we're playing Jack. Jack is an activity that you can work on your self rally and hand-eye coordination. You start bouncing one ball up or even doing a trap and you call out onesies. When you get two in a row, you call out twosies. The goal is to get all the way up to tensies. Tensies! For more activities like this, check out netgeneration.com. 
when I first got the net generation curriculum and equipment at my school, it quickly became a very hot commodity inside and outside of PE class. They love the rackets and the easy bouncing balls. What I like best is that it's fun. I enjoy teaching it. My students love when they see the tennis equipment out. It's giving them the opportunity to play a sport that they might not have the opportunity to do otherwise. Children every day, multiple times a day, were asking to use the equipment and wanting to go hit a ball. They didn't need a net, they just would hit against the wall or with each other or over the caution tape and they wanted to play all the time. The curriculum is very nice. It's very easy. I am not a tennis person, but it didn't mean that I, I couldn't follow the instructions. The lessons are user-friendly. I'm able to see what standards I'm meeting when I teach each lesson. It allows for modifications. It's easy to follow. That allows me to feel successful as a teacher, and so my students are set up for success in that way. You don't need to be the best athlete. You don't need to be the fastest or the quickest. Every child can be successful within the curriculum. It's a win-win for everyone. All right, so hopefully now you have a better feel for, for what we're talking about, and um, I wanted to share with you what, what we at USTA will, will bring to you. Um, you saw on the first line it said, or oh, actually above us here, free, 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 which is the good news. Um, we will give you this free equipment set when you sign up. We're going to talk to you a little bit later about how you sign up. But once you've done that, this equipment will arrive at your school. You get rackets, and you saw those rackets are specifically sized for younger children. They're light, they're easy. They can really play. Anybody, doesn't have to be an athletic person, can pick this up. And that's one of the most rewarding parts about bringing tennis to your PE class, you'll find that you don't only need to have athletic children feeling happy in PE. Every child can do this, which is super exciting. Um, you also see we get these balls. These are the red balls. They're low compression, um, specifically, now there's, Justin's got one too. She has a foam ball, slightly bigger. So they're different types of balls, specifically modified to suit children at different age groups. We have the red one, we have the foam ones for the little, little ones. We have red ones for the next age group that bounce at the right height for them to be able to develop the right strokes. Then they move on to orange, green dot, and then ultimately onto the yellow. You saw them talking about caution tape. You don't need a net. You put up some tape, it's easy. You don't even need to have the tape up. A lot of these exercises don't require a specific court. We have chalk where you can draw lines. You've got this wonderful roller bag, which is really easy, where you can walk it into your whichever area you're going to play the PE, do the PE class, and you can put all the equipment away. People love this equipment bag. It's very, very helpful. And you'll find that it's easy for the children to sort of access the rackets out of it as well. So one thing we get is free equipment. The second thing that we will give you is the curriculum. A lot of you will think, well, I love this idea, but gosh, I have no idea what to do in each of my classes. This has been really well thought out curriculum. And I'm going to try and hold this in front of me, which is always a bit weird with Zoom. Um, but you'll see that you get these, potentially these books, otherwise it's all online. And the beauty about the curriculum is it'll set up for you what your lesson plan is. Lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, lesson four, lesson five. It'll tell you what to do. You also might be concerned, gosh, I've got 24 kids in my class. What do I do with 24 kids? Well, what you will see that it has is it has different stations. Station one will have four to six kids doing one thing. Station two will have four to six kids doing something else. Station three, four to six kids doing something else. And you might be hitting in a specific sort of area doing something else with the, with the last four to six kids. And in that way, each of the kids are occupied doing things and then they rotate and do the next thing. So the lesson moves really well. They keep busy. They continue to have fun. And a lot of those exercises are things that are really, really enjoyable for them to do. They've got things like walk the dog, you'll see bull's eye, toss and catch, self-toss, an exercise that you saw. It's, it's very helpful as a PE teacher to have the curriculum already set out for you, and you do not need to know how to play tennis to do any of this. So you can get a hard copy, you can also get an online copy, and we will support you in understanding how to use this. It goes from grades K through to 12, depending on which age group you're teaching, and we have got guidelines, and Justin will talk to you more about the health and safety later on, that we are COVID friendly. So you'll see that tennis is one of the safest sports to play um, in terms of keeping social distance. The other thing that we bring is training. A lot of you will think, oh, that's all very well, but do I have to sit down and read through a book for ages? No, we will actually bring a certified clinician into a school, and we will help you work out how to run these programs. We will show you with that clinician 
It's a three-hour training that we provide, and that shows you and any of your volunteers that you have that might also want to do this out of school, um, how to actually go about running these different exercises. The training is fun. It makes it really easy and accessible. And again, you saw on the video, some of those people saying, I'm not a dance person, but by the end of the training, I knew what to do. When you sign up, you'll also be given newsletters, so they'll share best practices, there'll be new ideas, you don't get stale, you'll get little tips from other PE teachers and you'll have a network of people to talk to about how they're finding things are going and, and, and what's going well and what could be adapted and improved on. We also have an amazing app. So from a digital perspective on your phone, you'll see new program information and you can give examples and look at your, while you're walking around thinking, what am I supposed to do next? You can quickly look at your app and think, oh, yes, I'm now doing the walk the dog exercise. And it could remind you what to do. You can also show your children little videos from the app so that they can actually see visually what it is they should be doing before they do it on the court. So we've tried to make this really as user friendly as possible and as fun for you as possible. The feedback we're getting from a lot of PE teachers who are doing this is that this is one of their favorite PE courses that they run within schools because it is so much fun. And it's so rewarding to see how 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 much fun the kids have too. I'm gonna to hand back to Jocelyn now. She's gonna to talk to you about why you'd wanna do this. Thanks, Natalie. I think you've touched upon so many great features, um, particularly going back to that digital uh, feature, which those coaching plans or PE teaching uh, skills and plans and anything that you want to plug into that app that's readily accessible. And that's something that is, um, has been very useful and we've heard some great feedback from, from the teachers that use it. So why tennis in schools? Um, of course, we are biased to tennis, but we think cross-promoting all sports are lovely, um, but we know that tennis is um, a little daunting at first for a lot of PE teachers because they say, we don't have the space, so what do we do? Oh, that's lovely, that's a great gym, but our gym isn't that size. And Natalie spoke to that point earlier no problem, no space, no court, it's not a problem. Our equipment is, um, you know, to size and scale, so the racket isn't a larger racket. Um, there's also other uh, tools uh, in the tennis space. Obviously, these are foam balls that I showed earlier. Um, there's also the ability to know through the curriculum how to space the kids out and work in skills and stations. Um, so we do have that as well, which are station cards to go over some of those tap ups and tap down drills. And as you saw in the video earlier, one of our uh, national staff members who was doing tennis in the driveway, those types of skills isn't just driveway tennis, it's in any space. So kind of think that through a little bit and, and identify the fact that why tennis in schools? Because we do identify the fact that the space might be limited. We've actually had tennis done in cafeterias in those spaces and parking lots and smaller areas that you'd be surprised that you can pop up tennis. Um, it is also very key that we stress the equipment is free. So this gets you started. Um, not only does it get, get you started, but when you work with us, we want to see the sustainability of tennis in those schools. So. It isn't just handing you off equipment and off you go. We're here as a team to support you guys through this process and making tennis successful in your school. Hopefully through the PE classes, it feeds into intramurals or recess or other activities that the kids can do. Um, therefore, when the kids are more active, you have a healthy group of kids. So it's important for us to stress that as well. There's a lot of great health benefits to tennis mental and cardio, um, keeping those kids active and knowing about tennis. I say as a former coach, like tennis is cerebral, right? It's strategy, but when the kids are starting out in school, they're not thinking strategy, it's exercise, it's fun, it's building a skill. And eventually as they progress through that K through 12 structure and hopefully going on to may maybe play tennis in college, it would be great to know that it enhances mental clarity. Um, it's done it for me, no, just, um, <laughs> but in, in all seriousness, it's just a lot of great activities and a lot of advantages to having tennis as a sport 
and as an activity. And beyond tennis in the schools, we definitely have seen the success of uh, families playing tennis. It's not just something that's just kept to the school. So it's kind of well-rounded and into a pathway of more than just the school's piece of it. But it is great to know that kids can participate beyond the school space. Um, furthermore, these are great um, graphics that were designed from our colleague who's actually moving the slides through, Kristen Simple. And she and us as a marketing team collectively would be able to share these graphics with you in case you need them to share with a PTA group or just to help promote the reasons why tennis is healthy. Another great one here, just put, putting forward just some of those things that I talked about. Of course, physical, social, and emotional is such a great thing in terms of the health benefits. So here are some stats for you that you can use as well. And on to the next slide. This, is, this illustrates it perfectly. And as I said earlier, for me as a coach, I always use the term tennis is cerebral. So there is the strength of how tennis can improve your focus, definitely a stress reliever. Um, a lot of those things are illustrated here and continuing tennis as an aerobic exercise and understanding that you can build strength is just a fabulous thing. So we are so proud um, as, as a tennis organization to share those health benefits with you guys as PE teachers. Um, I'd like to also uh, talk about some of the things about all of these things put together, which Natalie actually will continue forward with sharing with you how and, and what to do with all of this information and how to get started. Thanks, Joss. And I'm going to reiterate that one of the things that our parents have all said to us is how they feel that when you teach tennis as a skill, you're teaching a life skill. So it goes beyond just the classroom to the rest of their lives. So if we just go back to the top, if you wouldn't mind, Kristen, of this form. Um, at this point in time, you're probably saying, yay, let's get started. <laughs> what do I have to do? How complicated is this to get my equipment? It's really simple. All we require that you do is fill in this really simple form. Here it is. If we scroll down, you'll see that it talks about what we're providing to you. And you just have to put in your name, your email address, your date of birth, whether you're a male or female, the school address, zip code, what your primary role is. And here, it's just whether you're an elementary, middle school or high school teacher. When you'd like to start your program, if you don't even know, it's just an estimate. And approximately how many total students that you'd have this will determine whether, you know, how much of equipment you get. Needing, if you've got a huge school, we might be able to get you two, two equipment packs. And then whether your shipping address would be your school address. We advise that people have things shipped directly to the school unless your school is closed for any reason with COVID, in which case we can ship it to you. So honestly, that form will take you less than five minutes to fill out. You send that back to us and we do the rest. And the equipment gets to you pretty quickly. So don't worry if you're thinking, gosh, I, I want to get started quite quickly. It can happen. And before the equipment arrives, we can still connect you online to start doing some of the exercises if you want to get started in the meantime. So after the session, if you're wanting to know where the link is to that form, Neil, who's our, our schools manager, will be sending you a version of uh, a copy of this recording and the links to get started so that you know what to do for next steps. We're going to the next one. The other thing that we'd like to mention to you is a lot of you might find that your kids are loving tennis so much that they don't want to just play it in the PE lessons. They want to do more. So what UST has done is we've, we've basically encouraged people to find a school partner, which is somebody in your local community, either in your park or a local tennis club or a coach who works near you, who can actually support running after school programs. And these after school programs can happen at your school. and We can work on how to do that with you or they can happen in the local park or in the local club. And don't worry, reach out to us. We'll find you a local school partner. That's part of what we do. So you don't need to know who these people are. Just say to us, we'd love to run an after-school program. Can you help us find a partner? We'll work on that for you. And then that partner can come to your school and provide after-school programming. A lot of the high schools are like so grateful for this because what happens is we're basically feeding and growing tennis from the elementary level to middle level 
So your high schools in your area become schools that actually can compete and have fun together. And what we found with a lot of the schools is that they now don't only have a varsity team, but they have a flourishing JV team as well, which is part of our goal. Tennis, you don't have to be an expert to love it. You can have a huge JV team as well that love and enjoy the sport just as much as the, the varsity kids do. And we'll support you with this. You might see there's a reference there to safe play. All of you as teachers will have already been through your background checks. With the school partners, we make sure that they are safe play approved, that they've had the proper checks, and that they are people who will be supporting your children in the right way that both your parents and your school would, would support. So that's, that's it from us for the moment. What we'd like to do now is um, ask you one more question, just to see whether we've convinced you. Would you or would you like to receive your free equipment and curriculum? Are you interested in this? Yes, where do I sign up is the one answer. No, I need more information. That's also fine. We'll give it to you. Let's quickly take that poll now and then we'll get over to the question and answers. We'll take a few seconds to let you answer and then see when the poll comes through. Last few seconds, any of you want to, to commit to, yes, I want to sign up. Anybody want any more information? Both of those are good answers. All right, let's see what we have. Oh, we like that. 95% mm -hmm. of you like to sign up. Great, we will support you to do that. And the 5% of you that want more information, either put that in the chat night right now, or we're going to open this up to Q&A. So we'd certainly be happy to answer your questions. We do have a good half hour to hoping that there'll be a lot of discussion now and anybody who wants to share ideas or views, you're welcome to do that on this, on this too. Um, Neil, who's actually in the background, will also be somebody who can answer some of the questions. And if Joe's still on the road, but actually calling in, he might answer some of them too. Okay, let's see if we have some questions. What if we have started Net Generation a couple of years ago, but never received free equipment, didn't go anywhere and don't know what happened? Okay, good question. Josh, do you want to start with that one? Yeah, it looks like Neil is about to type in an answer as well. So, but I'll, I'll take it live and speak to it. Um, that is something that you would contact um, myself or Natalie, Neil or Joe. We'll definitely identify where that is. Typically, as Natalie had mentioned, with that school partner, that a couple of years ago, was the initiator to make sure that the equipment arrived. Um, so we would just go back and, and sort of reference some paperwork that might have been uh, something that happened in the past. But rest assured, even if we can identify that, we'll certainly uh, re regroup and reset you to make sure that you can get your equipment this year in 2021. Thanks. And um, just to let you know, if you actually want to talk rather than just type in the question, you can raise your hand. Kristen, behind the scenes working all of this, will allow you then to speak. You don't have to stay on mute. So if you'd prefer to do that, feel free. Uh, there was a question about whether we'd get these videos. This full recording will be sent to you. If you'd like to get those videos separately to the recording, uh, feel free to email us and we can send those to you separately as well. I think a lot of you have been saying, I like that video. Can I, can I have a copy of it? So we'll make that happen. Absolutely. And I want to add to that, Natalie, there's also some other links that I think we could share that weren't comprised in that, in that vignette video there. And that would be very useful for you guys as well. So there's, there's been a multitude of videos that we've, we've put together. Yeah, when you get on Net Generation, you'll see that there's there's all sorts of videos. We've got some superstar tennis players who also supported Net Generation who who demonstrate some of these exercises. So that's also quite fun for the kids to see. Absolutely. I think the other question we have here is, would you recommend this equipment for an adaptive PE setting? Thank you for that question. And it's a very good question. Um, we would recommend for sure to, to take the kit, use your judgment as the adaptive PE teacher to understand what's going to be useful for the group. I do recommend the foam balls, balls and the red yeah. and the red balls. Um, so rackets of this type, it's 21 inches. So it's shorter. Um, so bear that in mind in terms of the ability of um, adaptive students. But I have um, post this call and when we send the information, I do have a resource that you can look to in terms of vendors 
um, with tennis equipment that might be a little bit more suitable for an adaptive class, such as softer paddle rackets instead of these hard rackets or something a little bit different. So these are something that are more customizable to the need that you have, but we're certainly able to talk you through that and help guide you to the right resources. We, we do have a lot of people who are, who are now starting to use tennis in adaptive environments. Uh, Jocelyn shared with you earlier some of the, um, the graphics that we've set out, sort of posters for tennis. We also have some posters that we developed specifically for adaptive programming. Um, we can share those with you. Feel free to reach out to us independently and we can put you in contact with other people who run adaptive programs so that you have a peer group of people that you can soundboard with and and who can also support you on, on, on various ideas for adaptive. It's, um, tennis is, has had great success um, with working with autistic children, for instance. Um, that recently we found that a lot of people are bringing tennis into that environment. Quite a lot more questions. Joss, do you want to um, answer the question about high school implementing the program in a larger group? Absolutely. Yes, um, we definitely have some best practices of utilizing net generation schools curriculum in a high school setting in a large group. Um, it is mainly about those stations that I, I kind of alluded to earlier. Um, obviously one large group on one court isn't conducive. We've also talked about stations a little bit um, and different areas that you can divide that larger group to make sure that they're working on skills based on that curriculum. Um, so it's, it supports that, but we can also, again, talk through some of the ideas that would suit a large group. There was somebody who asked a question about whether the equipment has to be returned. Once we send you the equipment, it is, it is yours. So you, you keep the equipment. There was a question related to that about whether the equipment needs to be paid for. No, the equipment is free. We send you that equipment for free. Um, Yep, and going through. If participants need a CTLE after the session, please have them email me. Okay, there's some people here on the chat. Everybody have a look at the chat. There are people who are reaching out saying that they um, that they have information as well. Feel free to reach out to them. Are nets included? Okay. Nets are not included in this equipment kit. We provide tape. So we find that it's quicker and easier sometimes to just put tape across. Um, some schools go out and buy nets, uh, which you're welcome to do you can find that there are nets online and they're pop-up. They're very easy to set up. Basically, there's three um, sort of sticks of sorts that come out of the one section and, and go onto the floor, plus the net piece on the top. A net would take you three to five minutes to set up, would you say, Jocelyn? Pretty oh quick. Oh, my goodness. Um, yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I think a minute, <laughs> a minute or less. A minute I, or less. I, I'm if so If you're really trained. good at it, you can yeah. do that. And, and your kids can set them up too. They they pretty quickly. You'll find um, that they're super easy, but you don't you don't need a net, and um, the tape the tape is a is a good option if you if you don't have budget for the nets in addition. Um, there was a question there about the training. Um, how do I go about getting the training, and um, is it free? Just do you want to answer that one? Yes. So by connecting with us. Uh, we would definitely set you up, um, talk through a date that makes sense. Uh, our team will find a trainer in your local area. Uh, it does not cost uh, anybody, uh, yourself as a, as a potential host at your school or the participants a fee at all. Um, we'll go through that training. And I think um, we did speak about it a little bit and said that it was a three hour in-person training um, and then there would be uh, us going or our trainer going over the curriculum and, um, and some of those guidelines. And the training's great because it's not sitting down and lecture. They, you basically are standing up, running through each of these exercises that you would be doing with your kids with the equipment, with the rackets. So it's demo style training. So by the end of it, you will be completely comfortable with all the exercises that you would be running and all the curriculum activities that you'd be running with your kids. You get a chance to, to go through it all. Yeah, Super and to, absolutely. And to add to that, it would um, likely be around, at least historically, we've been able to successfully 
um, organize them in and around those professional development time periods that the school has. This way you don't have to take uh, a day off or you know, hinder your uh, normal teaching schedule. So we try to coordinate um, with you guys. Somebody's asking about how they love tennis. They've forgotten how to score. Can we get a review as to how to teach it as a beginner? Of course, <laughs> we can help with anything you need along those lines. And, um, and even teaching how to score is something that, that is quite fun to do with your kids. The other thing that people forget is what the different names of the different lines are. So we've got fun little exercises that you run with kids where you go, stand on the baseline. And everyone kind of knows your base is stand on the service line, which really is a strange line because it's in the middle of the court as opposed to where you serve from. So no one gets that one right. Um, where is the alley? And, you know, the kids will all run to these different lines and try and get there fast. And um, we can, we'll do those types of things with you when we're training you so that you remember what all the lines are called yourself. And we can run through any questions like how do you score? And uh, the best way to learn how to score is to watch more tennis. <laughs> Go and watch tennis on TV. You'll it up pretty quickly but yeah we'll take you through through all of that um so and then people are saying i'd like to get started on the training and how do we get hold of all of you neil is going to be sending out all our contact details after this uh webinar so that everybody's attended will be able to email us directly and we can start working with you both setting up an application to get this equipment and to set up the training um and then do you see the question from Michael Jocelyn about offering training to PE teachers via Brooklyn College? Yes, that certainly can can happen. Right. There isn't there isn't anything that would preclude us from from doing that. So certainly, Michael, reach out. Um, and as Natalie said, our contact information would be shared after this session. Um, and Michael, Brooklyn is Neil Thacker's area. So He's the man. He's actually the school manager. So you're in good hands. Well, that's one of my alma maters. Oh, it is? Excellent. Yeah. And it's a great idea, Michael. I love the idea of trying to get a whole lot of people together to train. Um, if any of you have got creative ideas on, on, on other ways that we can introduce this into other schools, obviously, there are a lot of you here are already interested we are trying to access other people who maybe aren't aware of this or don't know, please feel free to be ambassadors on, on our behalf and reach out to others so that, so that we get this message out there um, so that we can touch as many people with this, you know, encouraging them to enjoy this, this game we all love. Yeah, these are some great questions. We appreciate uh, the feedback and, and the interaction. We're as excited as you guys to get this going. We know the schools have suffered tremendously during these difficult times, and we're here to absolutely support you and, and get those kids out there and getting you out there equipped with what you need and feeling confident in this um, implementation of tennis. We also have uh, social media. We have a Facebook page. We have Facebook groups of the, from the different areas. We have Instagram. We, we like to encourage our PE teachers to, to share some of the things that they're doing and we can post some of that on our Instagram, uh, on our Facebook. Um, and Neil will also share the details of how to access those, those Facebook groups and Facebook pages after this so that you, you can see um, um, where that is. We have another question here, Joss. How would you guys or would you guys be interested in speaking to upcoming PE teachers about, about this program? Absolutely. Um, so we have uh, attended a lot of the AFERG conferences uh, where we are in person, either at an exhibition booth or doing an actual presentation. And what we found was there is a large number of up and coming PE teachers. So PE teacher students at universities or colleges. So um, that is one uh, avenue we could take collectively um, hopefully back in person, but if we still need to meet um, in smaller groups and do something a little bit more uh, conducive to a local area or district, we can try to discuss that and try to set that up. And um, if you, with Teacher Appreciation Week, we have actually just posted something on our Facebook group, a story about tennis in school. So, you know, we encourage you to have a look at that. Some people are starting to ask about the form, saying, oh, my gosh, I missed the form. How do I sign up? 
don't worry. Neil's going to share that link so you can see it after this in an email to all of you. We'll get a copy of that link or reach out to us and we will um, share that link with you. It's very easy. There's a question there about whether you can use your personal email or whether you have to use your school email. Joss, do you want to answer that one? Um, yes, uh, the personal account is fine. Uh, definitely whatever you're comfortable with, but obviously uh, creating a USDA account always helps for future use in our kind of system of USDA. But for now, it's certainly fine to use your personal account if that be your comfort zone. And if you look in the chat right now, Neil has posted his email address into the chat, thakur at easton.usta.com. So if you're concerned about the fact that Jocelyn and I are failing to answer your questions as clearly as you'd like, you now have his email as well. So you can always ask him offline um, if there's anything you have. Um, and there's a question about what commitment is there? Are we held to using this curriculum for a certain amount of time? Not at all. This is a guideline. You know, we, we're offering this out there to support you. But if you have creative ideas about how to, to, to coach tennis or have come up with your own little ways of, of doing things that are fun, obviously you can do what you want to do. Um, and you don't have any, you don't have to run it for four weeks or six weeks, fit it in with your own schedule. Just you have additions to that being the, the tennis coach. I know you've added some fun things to your coaching with Jim. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's always uh, time to get creative. It, particularly we had the time to get creative during this an unfortunate time, but there's just so many activities you could you can implement, um, incorporating just household items and in, in an exercise. And um, I know when there was a PE on Zoom, uh, and my my husband teaches PE, he was using sock balls in the in the in the house. But anyway, um, creativity, best practices, sharing what we all love to do. Uh, engaging with our students and making sure that they're healthy and they learn a skill and have fun while doing it. We had people bringing balloons in for the little ones, you know, the, the kindergartners. And then we added that to, to what we did because a lot of kids, when they're very, very little, find a balloon even easier than a foam ball. So, you know, we, we love the idea of people being creative and, and doing their own, their own thing. Um, tennis, Tennis is supposed to be fun. That is the primary goal here is that the kids have a lovely time. And believe me, when, when we get the feedback, we get so many positive stories about how much fun the kids are having. Absolutely. And the PE teachers too. Right, 100%. Hopefully you, you guys uh, out there on the ground, in the gym, uh, anywhere you are trying to, to teach these kids, you know, hopefully you're you'll find that this would, would actually be fun in, in doing by utilizing our tennis curriculum and our support. The other thing that's really great about teaching tennis with the exercises, referencing what Jocelyn said about the cerebral, you'll find that there's certain exercises that are slightly more brain oriented or strategy and there are other ones that are more athleticism oriented and some that are more hand-eye, some that are more pure physical. So what you can do when you're running these various exercises is you'll find different kids are doing well at different things. So you can make it competitive, but you'll find that a lot of the kids are able to succeed in your class, which differentiates tennis a little bit from some other sports that are very repetitively just around one movement. And I think that is something that, that is very rewarding when you have a, a bigger class where a lot of people can feel, gosh, this has something in it for me. Um, and I think someone earlier referenced adaptive kids. That's a prime example where a lot of the adaptive children are able to really engage here and think, gosh, I can, I can do a lot of this um, and, and, and feel successful at it in my own space. I think Neil just popped up the link um, somewhere. Yes, I it's in the up. chat. Great. And then Marianne, I think it would be amazing to use this uh, tennis curriculum and the support and the, and the equipment for your summer sports camp for students. This would, would be a perfect opportunity. Um, so certainly reach out. Yeah, we have a lot of schools that are running summer camps. We'll help support. If you don't know how to start that, like thinking, gosh, I love the idea. I don't know what to do. 
no question is is too simple for us. We'll help and support you in any way we can. Um, and, and you don't even have to have a lot of kids to, to make it fun and successful. Just starting with a certain number is fine. As Josh said, the link to the form, we've got a few people saying we want to sign that form right away. It's there in the chat. You can link on it right away, put your name in, put your address and email, and, and we can get you started. It looks like our questions are winding down. We are, again, so appreciative of you guys taking your time, the time to join us uh, this late afternoon and to learn about tennis and, and the how and the why um, of why tennis would be a great sport to implement at your schools. If you're already doing it, bravo, kudos. Um, but thank you again for joining us. Uh, and also once more, happy teacher appreciation. Yeah. Uh, it's and incredible. It's, oh, it's yeah. been an amazingly difficult time for teachers. We want to say how, how grateful we are to all of you for, for sticking it out and being there for, for all the children, for all our children. And um, you are greatly appreciated. And we look forward to partnering you, with you on this going forward as hopefully things improve and we're able to return to some level of normality going forward. That's great. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, everybody. And thanks um, to Natalie for uh, co-presenting. It's always a pleasure thanks, to, to see you virtually. Hopefully we'll see each other uh, in person as well soon. Um, good night, everybody. And again, after this, you'll receive information via email if you weren't able to grab the form out of this Zoom session. We'll certainly do a post email to you all so you have everything that you need. Um, somebody just said the form can't be written on. Uh, you, when you put up the link, you should be able to write in it. Just email us if you're having problems with that. We'll, we'll help sort that out for you. The team just repeated. It's Jocelyn, myself, Neil, and Joe. Any one of us can help you and, and put you in the right direction. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night. Bye. Thank you.